This is Storm. She produced a video reacting to a video of an interview I did with her a number of years ago. So I decided to create a video reacting to her reaction video, trying to answer some of her questions and objections. She's obviously really upset by the interview. There were two major reasons for this, and that's what we're going to look at. Here's the first reason. This was the day. We we're going to film the Living Waters reaction. Let's get into the backstory because, um, yes, I am very familiar with the guy that made a video about me. Have I ever seen the video? No, I've never watched it. Um, I never wanted to watch it. I always thought it was like super cringe, especially with the way that um, all of it happened. Super, super weird. So today I'd like to share it with you guys. Um, you know... <laughs> One of the reasons that I didn't want to talk about this before, I talked about it a little bit on my Instagram. Uh, you guys, I was literally on the pier right now, just kind of hanging out, drinking a green juice. And so this man comes up to me, he's like, hey, I have a YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, cool. And he was like, can I interview you? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure, whatever. And I had no idea what he was gonna interview me about. And my conscience said no, but Storm said yes. So I literally like went over to this guy and I was like, doing this whole interview with him and it started out like okay he seemed like a pretty pretty chill dude and then all of a sudden it came into Christianity and Jesus and talking about all this nonsense and I just like I was like what he was like your your conscience is unhealthy and you're a sinner and you're a thief and blah 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 and I was like mm. <laughs> super cringe and super super weird was her dislike of the gospel Christianity and Jesus and talking about all this nonsense and I All was well up until then. Before we go any further, Storm makes a special request. I do want to say that if you are a hardcore Christian, and honestly, I'm expecting that because of the person we are going to be reacting to today, whose entire channel is dedicated to converting people to Christianity, you are one of those people that wants to sit and argue with me about religion in the comment section. I will block you, I will delete your comments, and I will flag those keywords because in no universe will I ever be Christian again. This is going to make her a little more upset, but no one can say I'll never become a Christian again. It's an oxymoron. It doesn't make sense. The biblical way to make that statement is to say, there's no way I'll be a false convert again. This is because a Christian is someone who knows the Lord. It's not a belief, it's a relationship. Scripture says if you put your hand to the plow to follow Jesus and even look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. A genuine convert doesn't even look back, so those who go back to the world show that they were never fit for the kingdom. The Bible likens them to a dog going back to its vomit, or a pig going back to rolling in the mud. A pig does that not because it's unclean, but because it wants to cool its flesh. And the same applies to the false convert. They're never crucified with Christ, and so their flesh longs for the sinful pleasures of the world. So if you have an opposing opinion, that's fine. Don't shove it down my throat. That's the nicest way I can put it. Let's make sure we honor that request. Don't try and reason with her because she's got her boxing gloves on. Just show her love and kindness and make sure you pray for her. I was raised a die-hard Christian. I 100% believed in it when I was in it. I was never allowed to not believe in it, honestly. I lived the traditional Christian lifestyle, no shorts, no sex before marriage, and I started to meet atheists, and I started to meet Catholics, and I started to meet Buddhists. It was kind of a culture shock for me, not gonna lie, and just listening to their experiences, kind of seeing that not everybody is literally a Christian, like you can make your own way in this world and believe whatever you feel drawn to, that, you know, ended up changing my perspective a lot. So, so the channel is called Living Waters, okay? He has now 1.03 million subscribers. And this guy, he is like super weird, this random man out of nowhere comes up to me 
and he is saying, hey, I have two Chick-fil-A gift cards. Like, do you want one? Me, loving food, was like, yeah, like that would be cool. And he was just like, yeah, I just want to film like a quick video with you, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And then I believe the first thing he even asked me was, is it okay if um, I film you like on camera? And I'm like, yeah. And I wanted those Chick-fil-A gift cards. So he like bribes you. I don't know. I've never seen his videos, so I couldn't tell you like what he actually does with everybody else, but he bribed me with food. And honestly, that's all you needed to do to get me and my attention on game. Actually, that is not true. I didn't give her Chick-fil-A gift cards. They were in and out gift cards. I simply said to her what I say to anyone I want to interview. I'd like to talk to you about the afterlife and I'll give you a couple of $5 in and out gift cards as a thank you for your time. There's a big difference between showing someone gratitude for their time and bribery. You think there's an afterlife? I do. I think it's dimensional and I think it has something to do with like the way that we die, like our energy. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, he can take death off you. He can rescind your death sentence. Mm -hmm. He can let you legally live forever, even though you're guilty. Just look at your watch. Yeah, I got a text message. Someone okay. Said, how am I doing? And I don't know how to respond right now. Just, I know it's boring for you. It's just talking about how you can live forever. It's not boring. It's not boring. It's interesting. Oh, my little tooth, too. Poor baby. I have a missing tooth um, in the back because when I was in high school they wanted to give me a root canal and I was like no I don't want a root canal it was going to be free you guys I actually should have never allowed me to say no um but obviously I was in a group home and I just like refused but then it ended up like crumbling and dying and like did you hear that they should never have allowed me to say no but you did say no because you thought you knew best they knew what would happen to your tooth so they really did care about you and we are super concerned with something infinitely more valuable than just a tooth it's your very life the eternal salvation of your soul but once again you think you know best this makes me sad like watching this girl is making me really sad because i just feel like she's so like not put together okay anyways well, technically yeah i would say the person the individual that has the energy would be in charge of their own frequency, right? No, because you've got no choice when it comes to death. None of us want to die. Are you afraid of dying? Uh, I used to be. What happened? I figured out that I can't control it, so I might as well just like not be so seriously and thought about it all the time. So if you're on a highway and there's an 18-wheeler heading for you 80 miles an hour and it's 100 yards away and it's coming towards you, you say, this is inevitable. I'm just going to be positive about this. No, you'd, you you want to. Okay, he totally took out of context what I said. First off, if there's a semi truck going 80 miles an hour straight at me, I'm probably not going to have time to process it. Yeah, it's 100 yards away, and it's coming towards you. You say, "This is." You know what I mean? Like I'm going to know that it's coming towards me, but I'm not going to be able to be like, "Oh yeah, let's figure out how I feel." Like you know, it's just going to happen. I'm going to die instantly. Like that impact would kill me instantly. So. Honestly, would it really matter? Of course it would. This is your precious life we're talking about. The truck is 100 yards away. That's 300 feet. It's going at 80 miles an hour, which means you have just over two and a half seconds before you die. That's not a lot of time, but I don't think anyone in his right mind would stand there and think, Oh yeah, let's figure out how I feel. Most of us would leap out of the way in a millisecond. At 80 miles an hour, I'm going to die. Like, there is no moving out of the way. You should be trying to get out of the way of death. It's your biggest enemy. You think? Do you believe in reincarnation? Death is not an enemy. Death is inevitable. If you follow Christianity, right, um, God had his son, Jesus, obviously. We didn't have him. You know, it's apparently an extension of him. I don't know. His energy went into a human being and then transcended into the past life, right? No, that's not right. There's no transcending into the past life. God became a human being. The Bible says that. God was manifest in the flesh. Scripture says, a body you've prepared for me, and then God filled that body as a hand filled the glove. It has nothing to do with reincarnation. So if he's saying that we can't be reincarnated, how was it even possible for him to develop on this earth at all? questions that I have that will never be answered by a Christian, right? Well, he was born of a virgin. How? The answer is that with God, nothing is impossible. 
God spoke the universe into being with his voice. He can walk on water, he can raise the dead, he can multiply loaves and fishes and feed 5,000, so the virgin birth is no problem. But it will be for an idolater, someone who has no understanding of the scriptures nor the power of God. Their concept is probably of that hairy man sitting on a cloud poking his finger at Adam's finger. I know that they do it, and this has like 16,000 likes and almost 500,000 views, but the fact of the matter is, like, this is kind of gross, honestly. The darkness, we hate the light, and we don't want to come to the light, but I, I trust today you're going to think about this at least and consider what we've talked about and consider the, the value of your life. Your life is more precious than your eyes. It's your soul. And Jesus said, what shall a prophet a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So what do you think about what we talked about? Uh, my opinions have not changed. That does period. Like, leave it at that. Matter. As long as you've listened, none of us want God. The Bible says we hate God without cause. We use his name as a cuss word. But the scriptures say no man can come to the Son unless the Father draws him. And I trust that a lot of people are going to be praying for you and that yeah, you'll realize that your life is so important and you don't want to lose it because of your love for sin. Like, stop stop. Do you have a Bible at home? No. Storm, you've been a real good sport. You've been very gracious. You haven't agreed, but you've had the kindness to listen to what I said. And for that, I'm, I'm very grateful to you. So thank you very much. Of course, good luck. What was it that really concerned her? What was the worst part of this video? Get ready to be shocked. Here it is. The thing I was concerned about the whole time was my tooth. I don't like showing it. I don't like looking at it. Um, it's an unfortunate tragedy. The dictionary says a tragedy is an event causing great suffering, destruction, and distress, such as a serious accident, a crime, or a natural catastrophe. And then they give an example of how to use the word tragedy. A tragedy that killed 95 people. It's not the loss of a tooth. That was like the worst part of the video. I give the video a three out of 10. I just dislike Ray. My desire for good food took me a little far that day. I should have said no, but you know what? At the end of the day, it is what it is. Like, I still stand behind everything I said in this video. I thought I seemed very well-rounded, but maybe that is just my opinion. You know, if we read the comments, I was an occultist, atheist, anti-thesis tarot card player new age person i was born again at 28 baptized three days before my 29th birthday storm talks exactly how i used to talk before i was saved she knew the rest of the scripture she knows the gospel god will get this girl this was me god bless her i love the fact that she stayed and listened to ray she's very respectful when she completed that bible verse her face lit up yeah because most people that are hounding you about christianity don't expect you to know the Bible. I appreciate that a lot of people are a lot nicer in these comments. I don't know if he went through and filtered them out, but I do remember them being not so um, nice the first go around, even though I didn't watch the video. Like, I would see things that were like being posted about it, and um, it wasn't the best. Everyone reading this, please pray for Storm. That's the girl in the video. She has a YouTube channel and is currently expecting a baby, and her life is going through a lot of changes and needs emotional and spiritual support. I don't know her, but I have so much love for her and just hope that she prays. Oh, that's sweet. Make sure you check out the Living Waters podcast and this. It's everything I've ever learned in 50 years of apologetics and evangelism. Get your copy of the Evidence Study Bible and check out the starter kit while you're there at livingwaters.com. One person that got back to me after an interview was the most colorful atheist I've ever met. Just an amazing guy. He got back to me and when he came back, he had a Bible in his hand. It's an amazing story, so don't miss it. Just click here.